So as usual, we're starting with smudging these sketch lines out. And in this tutorial, the steps that I'm taking, if you take those steps and apply those techniques, you're going to get exact same result. Basically, painting skin is really, really easy and you'll be able to do it. So this is the first step. Just blend out your sketch lines. Your final sketch lines, blend those out with smudge brush. Make sure the opacity is low. Create another layer underneath it and start filling up everything, every little shape that you have. So I'm using this color palette right at the bottom and I'm filling in the skin color on the face. I'll be filling in the hair color as well. And yeah, that's the first step to create or to get ready with the base. Similarly, you will be filling out all the little details you have on the face like iris, eyebrows, lips and even the white part of the eye. Now this illustration is inspired by Blue Satin and I also kind of used her technique as in she actually creates or shades or paints the face in a very simple way where she's not using a lot of colors. So here also I have just picked up two colors for creating shadows on the face. One is this reddish kind of color and one is this brownish kind of color. So only two colors. I'll be only using these two colors only to create shadows all around the face. And you'll be you'll just see what I'm talking about because this is about keeping it simple and still getting a good result. So because some, sometimes we get caught up so much into creating details that we keep on adding colors. But the process is really, really simple. You have to keep it simple. So the first step was to blend the sketch lines, then add the base colors like I'm doing right here. I also added some color for the eyebrow as well. I wanted it to be light. So I kind of went ahead and blended it out with smudge brush and also kind of erased because it was just looking a little too much then once you have it all ready what you want to do is you want to pick a black color and add this black color wherever you need to add it like nostrils and between the lips also this part of your eye which is called pupil and we are doing this so that it will guide us later on in the process as to how much shadow to add okay it doesn't make any sense right now but you will see what I'm talking about okay so this is another essential step once you're ready with your base colors. Now after that, obviously I picked up, I, I guess I picked up the third color from the color palette I created right at the bottom. And I'm just adding really lightly it around the nose. And the brush I am using is Airbrush Trapezoid, I believe, 40%. Now 40% is to have softer edges when you are painting something and you can use 60% airbrush trapezoid 60% if you want to have some harsh edges so it's like a hard airbrush all right so but all along the video I have just used airbrush trapezoid 40% that's a good that's a really good brush and I used it for everything even for eyebrows even for eyelashes and everything else so that's what I'm using. I usually just increase the size of the brush, barely touch on the screen to add soft shadows. The reason being because I want to avoid using as much brush as much as possible. That's the key when we are shading skin. Okay, you want to you don't want to smudge it all out. You want to keep something there. You want to keep some sort of harshness there. So as you guys can see, I also added the color um, on the eyelid around the nose just to create the shape of the nose and I also created this cast shadow now the shadows right now look really soft that is the goal because you don't want to paint everything just now you don't want to add all sorts, of, all sorts of shadows on the face right now the goal here in this step is to create the base shadows and when I call when I say base shadows I mean the base layer for the shadows okay so this is in this step it's essential to make sure these are not very pigmented these are light these are soft so that we can later on use these as base to add more depth to the face and now I actually picked up the second color from the palette right at the bottom which is this pinkish kind of color and I am not adding it as blush necessarily Although I did add this color over the cheeks, but I also added this on the forehead and all around the face just to kind of 
uh, make skin look like skin, okay? Then, now what we're doing is we are, I just picked up some random brown color. I think I first picked up the third color from the palette and I darkened it up a little. And then I just added it around the nose like that because it was lacking this detail or this harshness. And so having a good combination of soft and harsh shadows and highlights on the face is really necessary. But because in this video we are keeping it simple, I didn't make it that prominent. I didn't make it that pigmented, okay? So again, this is again, just base layer for shadows and that's it, that's all it. Now I went ahead and started shading lips. So for that, what I did, I picked up the lip color, darkened it up on the color wheel and I just started adding it around the lips like that. Yes, I was constantly looking at the reference, but the good, good rule of thumb or I should say a technique is to pick up your lip color, darken it up, add the shadows wherever you are supposed to add it in accordance with your reference. And also make sure that you are blending the ed edges of the lips with the skin. It should look like it belong to the face. So it's kind of merging with the face, not completely, but just a little bit. It should not the lip line should not be harsh. It should be soft, as you guys can see here, right here in the video. So lips look good, very plump, very realistic. And if you're still confused, like if you still want a detailed tutorial, I have a lot of tutorials on shading lips, this and that. And I also have some tutorials how to shade lips on Ibis Paint. So the techniques are dissimilar no matter what software or app you're using. It doesn't really matter. Okay, techniques are similar. So that's what I did right here. And I also created eyebrows. Again, I have tutorials on eyebrows as well on Ibis Paint. I will be linking all those down below. Now I started with the eye and I'm starting with eyeliner. So I am creating this eye shape with this eyeliner. And again, this is in accordance with the reference I'm looking at. And what I did, I started creating this line and I also made sure that the edges are soft. Okay, the edges are soft. Now this liner this eyeliner is going to guide me later on and I also created eyelashes again with airbrush and if you don't know how to create or draw eyelashes again I have in-depth tutorial on that as well it's really really easy you guys it's really easy okay so that's what I did and I'm gonna repeat the similar process similar thing on the other eye as well then I went ahead and started outlining the iris picking up the color that i had originally uh, painted for the iris and darken it up to add shadows around it iris is so simple just add some dark shadow right around the circle and also on the upper part of it just to create this shadow almost okay i also made the liner and eyelashes black in color also, I've created everything in separate layers so that I can alpha lock stuff and make sure that I'm not ruining my painting. I also added this dark little color and I added it in the white part of the eye to create a shadow. And I, I, th I think I used black color and I, what I did is I decreased the opacity and then I added it. Okay, black color is really, really helpful to create some, um, to add some depth to the face, okay? And I also added this little white ring kind of thing over the eyes to create this reflection kind of thing or this highlighted kind of thing to the eye as if she's looking at the ring light, if that makes any sense. Now, once the eyes were done, I went ahead and I started with adding more depth uh, when it comes to adding shadows. Now, it was necessary to create or to complete the eyes first because as you guys can see right now, when the eyes are done, it, it will help you in deciding as to how much color to add as shadow or how much pigment should be there over the shadows, if that makes any sense. So create your base shadow layer initially first. That is the first thing you want to do. Then complete the eyes, complete the lips, and those completed eyes and lips are going to guide you into deciding how much color to put in for specific shadow or not, okay? I hope this is making sense. I'm trying my best to explain you guys. And so I started adding more depth I started adding more color, more pigmentation over the base layer of shadows. 
And yeah, that's what I'm doing right here. It's really simple. And again, not going to use any smudge brush to smudge it out. But if you want to, if you think you need to, then you can actually use the smudge brush. Just make sure that the opacity is low, okay? You don't want to smudge it all out. Once that was done, again, I didn't want to add more shadows to the face just yet. I wanted to complete the hair first so that I can later on decide how much I should add onto the face. This is a really great tip that actually changed my process and how my drawings looked. Okay, I was always so focused on creating perfect shadows on the face first and then I used to create or then I used to paint all these details later on and it just the result was good but as compared to this technique where you are just creating these base layer of shadows first and you are adding detail to everything else like the eyes lips and the hair it just helps you in deciding okay how much I want to add as a shadow this really does make a difference. I will recommend you guys to give this a try. So again, I'm painting hair. Hair was simple uh, because of the reference that I was using. It was really, really simple. I just added some shadows around the face, as you guys can see, on the hair. And then I just started adding hair like strokes. I, I added light hair strokes. I added dark hair strokes. And then I went to hair with a smudge brush to smudge it out and blend it with the rest of the hair. Again, at the same time, making sure it's not blended out completely. Now, again, I have so many hair tutorials on my channel, especially for Ibis paint as well. So if you don't know how to paint hair, you're confused. It's just really, really simple, you guys. All you have to do is just practice. Practice, 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 and it'll just become really simple. So that's what I'm doing here. I added more dark hair strands, again, using the same brush. Now, once the hair were done, I went ahead and I actually added shadows behind the scene but I'm just going to show you guys the difference. I created a new layer, added clipping mask to the main face painted layer. As you guys can see I changed the layer mode to multiply and just look at the difference. I used that pink color, the second color from the palette to add more shadows and it looks so good. And the hair and the eyes, the completed hair, the completed eyes really did help me in deciding how much color I wanted to add okay it's really simple do not complicate your process now once everything was done and I was happy with it I went ahead and picked a white color to add highlights on the face it's really simple again you can either decrease the opacity of your brush to create the first layer of your highlights as as we did with the shadows or you can just go straight ahead and increase the opacity up to the max and just create highlights it's just up to you okay highlights are the highlights are really simple you just have to decide where you want to put it okay so i did, i added it on the tip of the nose lips and also the eyelids as well and yeah that's it i also added some of the highlight on the cheek area you you will you guys will see and it actually did make a difference it actually helped in making the face look realistic and more human-like you know life-like as you guys can see it's shining it's chubby it's young looking it's refreshed that's what we wanted so that's it that's how you simply very simply paint skin paint a face it's not difficult you guys and if you apply the techniques the tips that i gave in, you gave you guys in this video you are going to get good results and if you're not getting it just yet just practice it keep on practicing it okay it's all about practicing and if you end up creating the same thing out of this tutorial tag me on instagram i would love to see that other than that i will see you guys in my next video